Hey everyone, it's Numan Ahmad, aka the Ibn Ahmed, aka Ibn. If you watch my channel, you've probably noticed fewer uploads, inconsistent posting, and radio silence for weeks at a time. I owe you guys the truth, and today's video is about academic failure, institutional consequences, and trying to build something online while your real life falls apart. If you came for study tips and motivation, you're about to get something very different. A few months ago, I had a conversation with my school's administration. I'd been sharing institutional content online. YouTube shorts and Instagram reels that violated the school's policy. The line between documenting your journey and violating policies is thinner than you think. I'm grateful that the administration at my school was fair. They gave me a warning, not a punishment. But to me, the meeting that we had wasn't necessarily about the videos themselves. To me, it was a mirror. Upon reflecting, what I saw was someone who cared more about content than education. And that realization hurt me more than the meeting itself. Here's the reality of my situation. Right now, I'm ranked 30 out of 32 students. My GPA is a 1.96. At the beginning of my first semester, I failed embryology, and about four weeks ago, I failed microbiology as well. I am failing medical school right now. I'm not struggling. I'm failing. If I fail one more class, I have to repeat my whole first year again. That's an extra year of tuition. The year on repeat because I couldn't get my priorities straight. So I'm basically one exam from having to start all over again. When I failed embryology, I cried in the shower. And then when I failed micro, I recorded it and cried like a baby. Bro, this sucks. so annoying bro but beyond the career implications there's something that's even scarier to me which is am i even building the foundation that i need to take care of patients when your gpa is a 1.96 you're not just risking your career you're risking becoming a doctor who doesn't know how to do the job properly but this this entire situation that i'm in these are just the symptoms the question becomes what exactly led to my poor performance what exactly is the underlying disease i told myself that i was skill stacking by combining medicine ai coding and entrepreneurship worship together. But if I'm being completely honest, like I wasn't even coding that much. That was just the intellectually acceptable explanation for why I was failing. The real issues were harder to admit. I'm obviously living alone and in a much bigger city for the first time, and I underestimated how much loneliness and isolation would affect my ability to stay disciplined. When you're living alone, it's much easier to make poor decisions repeatedly because there's no immediate accountability. Living alone, I fell into a loop. Scrolling, AI crutch, endless digital distractions. I felt busy, but but I wasn't actually learning. And here's maybe the most pathetic part. I was watching a lot of videos about being disciplined rather than being disciplined in real time. I could explain on the live streams accountability to other people, but when it came time to show up and be accountable for myself, I struggled with that. To show up and to do the boring work that I needed to do. In fact, as I'm sure many of you guys have seen, when it came time for exams, I was using AI as a crutch, having it summarize textbooks for me, make flashcards that I would study for my exams, and explain concepts to me. At the time, I thought that I was being efficient, but I was robbing myself of the cognitive work that builds real understanding. And, and it's true that I can point to loneliness and living in a bigger city with more distractions, but at the end of the day, those are explanations, not excuses. For me, the work was there. I knew what I needed to do, and I just chose not to do it. And that's one of the hardest things to admit. Other people had those same challenges and still did the work. Some of my classmates had greater trials, greater tribulations, had less resources, and still showed up, but I didn't. Part of this is just growing up, learning that discipline is a skill that you have to build. It's not something you just have. Here's the thing that I want you to understand. It wasn't just one big thing. It was a dozen small things compounding together. Loneliness, immaturity, depending on AI to do my work for me, hours of digital distraction, content consumption instead of actually working, and the coding thing is just something that I told myself as a justification. Telling myself that I'm distracted by coding projects sounds a lot better than I'm lonely, I'm not mature enough to handle living alone, I'm using AI to avoid thinking. I'm spending hours consuming content about success instead of actually achieving it. But the second one is what's actually true. Speaking of avoiding the truth, let me talk about the live stream. When you're studying on camera, you're not actually studying. Instead, you're actually performing studying. When people were watching my live stream, I did things that looked productive rather than things that actually were productive. Methods that looked good on camera rather than what actually worked. Responding to comments. Making content engaging. And then when I looked back at my analytics, when I was actually doing the work and actually focused on my studies, that's when my channel grew more. Compare that to when I was studying performatively, the growth slowed down. The irony is that I was sabotaging both my channel and my education by optimizing for growth on my content. The camera was making me worse. When you're aware that you're being watched, you perform, you curate, optimize for the wrong metrics. And then for that other class in histology, when I stopped studying performatively and instead had my head straight, my analytics went up. And then when I went 
back to performing, my analytics went down. But it wasn't just my analytics that went down, it was my grades too. So the question becomes now, like, what do I do going forward, right? So here's what's going to be changing on my channel. First, there's going to be no more screen sharing. The stream is just going to be me studying. I can't be sharing my screen. I'm not going to be trying to make any deliberate effort to make it more interesting for audience retention. I'm definitely going to be removing the comments from the screen while I'm in active study blocks. I want to do one hour long sessions where I can't see notifications or comments from my viewers. I'm okay with checking in after every hour, but during my Pomodoro, I need to be taking it more seriously with complete focus. I still want to build my channel. As I've said several times, YouTube is a side hustle for me, but it's clear now that I was prioritizing the side hustle over medicine. So now I'm cognizant of the fact that the live stream itself serves two main purposes, which is accountability for me and then content for you guys. The difference is going to be in the priority. Medicine will come first. Accountability is the primary function of my channel now, and the content is going to be secondary. But more importantly, I have to address the actual problems and deficiencies that led to me being in this situation to begin with. So I'm going to be more intentional about building a community, joining study groups, and, and actually showing up to things. For AI serving as a crutch, there's going to be no more using AI as a reflex to avoid doing thinking. If AI is doing the cognitive work for me, then I'm not using it. To address my inefficient studying, I'm going to be doing the actual hard work now. That means reading textbooks. That means struggling through difficult concepts instead of looking for shortcuts. In my experience, when there's been times that I've done really well in school, reading the textbook is the only foolproof mechanism to achieve success academically. For digital distractions, I'm forcing myself to sit with boredom and discomfort instead of running to distractions when things start to get hard. I'm setting up screen time on my phone and my laptop so that I don't have access to any distractions and I'm giving the password. The password's going to be generated by my friend. That way I don't have any choice but to study. A big factor in mental health is also exercise and making sure you're eating enough. For my own personal health, I'm going to be making sure that I'm eating right and ensuring that I'm getting enough exercise every week. And with the concept of immaturity, this is still an active effort, but I'm learning to manage the autonomy and the freedom that I have living in a bigger city completely alone, building systems and creating accountability for myself. While we're here, uh, the subject of music is also pretty contentious. I'm sure a lot of you guys know my position already. From a religious perspective, I don't think music is necessarily haram, but I do acknowledge that there's good and bad uses for music. Obviously, the hard truth is that a lot of times music is a distraction for me. Medical school is a test of discipline. I use music as a coping mechanism to fill the silence, but maybe that silence is exactly what I need to sit with. And here's something that I feel like like people don't really discuss. It's that no amount of external tools like caffeine will make discipline automatic. In fact, a lot of the time, that extra energy will just point in the wrong direction. You end up being productive on the wrong things. Discipline is not its not about having energy. It's about directing that energy when every part of you wants to direct it somewhere else. So I'm going to try to experiment. I'm going to try and see what tracks retention for me. At the end of the day, if silence is what is more effective for me, then that's what I have to do. Because in my situation, the alternative is repeating another year. Another thing that bothers me a little bit is the concept of authenticity. This is where things get kind of complicated, I feel like. Residency programs will Google you. There's several cases of situations where people's careers have been derailed by things that they post on social media. Here's the paradox though. If you filter everything through fear, then what exactly are you creating? There's so many physicians that wait until after they match to finally be real. They spend years building facades, and then once they're secure, they're board certified, they finish their residency. At that point, then somehow all of a sudden they're authentic. For me personally, I don't want to spend the next eight years of my life pretending to be someone that I'm not. But at the same time, I'm not naive. I want to keep doors open, so I have to be strategic. I understand that reputation is very important. I believe reputation matters. The question then becomes, where exactly is the line? To be honest, I don't have the answer. Even in this video that I'm recording right now, there's some things that I want to say that I just can't say publicly. And obviously, I have a strong dislike toward this whole phenomenon. But given the game of life and the cards that I'm dealt right now, and the way that life is played out, I won't spend years building a fake version of myself only to wake up at 35 and not recognizing who I ended up becoming. I believe that there has to be a better way. And for me personally, I think it's still a work in progress. I'm still figuring these things out. But at the end of the day, my priority has to be medical school. It can't be content creation right now. It can't be growth of my channel and it can't be side projects. I need to climb from the bottom 10% of my class 
have to make sure that in this next semester that's coming up, I'm not going to fail a single class. Live streams are going to continue, but they're going to look different. Zero performative studying, focused blocks. If that's less entertaining and it gets fewer views on my channel, I'm okay with that. Because right now, the metric that matters to me is not whether I get a certain amount of views, it's whether I excel in medical school or I don't. I've proven to myself in the past that I can do this with the right mentality and the right focus, but I need to apply that across everything. For me, this isn't about singular focus, it's not about skill stacking, it's not about having an intellectually sophisticated framework. I think what it boils down to is it's about growing up and doing the work that needs to be done. And what that means is no more excuses, no more rationalizations, and no more clever explanations for why I'm failing. It will be just me putting in the hours, doing the work that needs to be done, and building the foundation properly, inshallah. Guys, make dua for me to be successful. Allahumma ja'alna muflihin. Please pray for me, guys. All of us make mistakes. I'm a work in progress figuring it out in real time and stuff like that. At the end of last semester, I could have kept making content and acting like everything was fine, but that's not who I want to be. I believe transparency matters even if it means being uncomfortable, even when it might come back to bite me. I'm not going to lie. The pressure to hide yourself is real. Fear of consequences is real, but so is the cost of pretending to be something that I'm not. People respond to what's real. They respond to genuine focus, to someone who's actually doing the work and not just performing it. I don't know what my viewer count's gonna end up being. I don't even know if people are gonna stick around to continue to watch me. I'm mentally prepared to have zero viewers and lose all my subscribers. But what I do know is that I would rather fail authentically than to succeed as someone that I don't recognize. I'm going to fix my academic situation. I'm going to give medicine my full focus now. I'm grateful that I'm at the bottom. I thank God that I still have a shot and I'm going to take it while being inspired by my peers who understand what real discipline looks like. Thank you guys for listening. I'll see you guys on the streams in a very different way.